Hi, it's Mike from Gaze at the National Parks, the podcast. And during the months of January and February, we're highlighting the work of Edge Outdoors in our community effort to showcase organizations who are working towards social justice, environmental action, and more inclusive public lands. Edge Outdoors is a powerful initiative created to address the invisibility of Black, Indigenous, women of color, and snow sports. Their dynamic initiative tackles the underrepresentation of Black, Indigenous, women of color, cis, trans, and queer in snow sports and helps to elevate them to new heights. Along with introducing people to snow sports, they seek to revolutionize the landscape and help to create opportunities for women of color to not only recreate, but to become leaders in the outdoors, specifically on the slopes. Their work helps to undo past discriminatory practices that were designed to exclude people of color, specifically women, from mountain spaces. Make monthly charitable giving a trend in your life in 2024 and help support Edge Outdoors this January and February. Visit edgeoutdoors.org to donate or visit the link in our Instagram bio for more information. So let's talk about hikes that have an interesting or unexpected kind of payoff to them because I feel like these are always the hikes that I am leaving the most impressed with. Yes, totally. The ones that pack a surprise. Yeah. Okay, so something that comes to mind immediately is like um, Angel's Landing. Mm-hmm. We knew, well, not all of us knew about the chains going on. Some of us did. Some of us did. <laughs> Some of us knew what they were going to be. Some of us did not. Mm-hmm. But Scout's Lookout was a surprise to me. You sure? Yeah. That is a place you can see essentially the exact same view without doing the chains. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we always say, hey, if you don't want to do the chains and, you know, defy death <laughs> to, in order to get to the top, then... Um, stop at Scout's stop Lookout. Stop at Scout's Lookout. Exactly. Great view. I think one that always was uh, one I continue to return to is Chimney Rock in Capitol Reef. What a surprise. Right. I totally recommend everybody do that at Mm -hmm. sunset because yeah, oh yeah, the colors that have a headlamp. Yeah, (laughs) the clothes that you're gonna get exactly when Um, you go to Paris. mm -hmm. It's just not fair. It's not fair. You You eat eat carbs. carbs. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Carbs are an product. important macronutrient group. <laughs> That's right. Eat your carbs, everybody. Eat your carbs, They girl. give you energy. It's true. That's right. I highly recommend that. You know, there's so many others that come to mind. Literally anything in Bryce Canyon. Mm-hmm. Every corner you turn, it's like a new yeah. surprise. Yeah. Olympic, there were a lot of surprises. A lot of surprises. Yeah. I love when you're like, you're doing this trail for this one view, but then you get all these other surprises yeah. along the way. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's like the beauty of hiking, right? Yeah. Who knew? that you were going to get all these things. I mean, that's true. And then you do have the hikes that are just kind of the ubiquitous hikes that you would have almost anywhere where it's like, we're just in a forest. And Mm -hmm. not that there's anything wrong with that because sometimes there's something beauteous about the quiet. That's true. But you're not always like gifted this amazing sort of like experience or view or something that like, you know. Another one that comes to mind is um, Scudic Peninsula in Acadia Mm. because... You do that in order to get out to this one sort of, uh, you do this, the trail to get out to, you know, the, the shore to sit on the rocks, to like see all the stuff that the shore has, Mm -hmm. but the whole trail itself trail is just like soft magic, mossy fairy forest. Mm -hmm. And like, what a surprise that was. It is. So I love it when, you know, like a good film or a good story or a good book Mm. or a good show Mm -hmm. you show up to watch one thing and then it gives you something else true much like your favorite film of all time Mm -hmm. the family stone yeah no you do love the family stone i do but it's just sad i mean yeah because that movie was that's more like a bait and switch situation that is a bait and switch it is Mm -hmm. because it was advertised as rom-com and gave us like sadness full-on kitchen sink sadness Mm -hmm. kitchen Mm -hmm. sink drama at its highest yeah yeah. That's right. You know that's that's you and me, Kat, mm-hmm. in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All the Diane Keaton sadness. That's right. Inside your well, tummy. <laughs> what is important to note is that you in your life identify as, as Diane Keaton. That's right. Because you are. I Mostly am. because you're Annie from the First Wives Club. Right. And if you've listened to our show, everybody, you know that eventually at some point every episode we will devolve into the First Wives Club. Or the Devil Wears Prada. Or the Devil Wears Prada. But or, or 30 Rock. Or something like that. <laughs> because those yeah. are 
canon. Um, pieces of the canon that we both deeply love and deeply mm-hmm. share. It's true. So yeah, who knows what surprises are around the corner as we head into our last episode in Big Bend National Park. Looking for adventure, I want to follow on the trail Or get a little lost and let the wind fill my sails Get up when the stars still fill the sky, don't wake the sun There's so much to be done, and the day has just begun Go where the postcards are real, you can feel You can open your eyes, and open your heart when you get at the National Park. At the National Park. At the National Park. Follow you, I'll follow you We would like to acknowledge that while hiking and visiting the land, also known as Big Bend National Park, that we are on the traditional and stolen land of the Humanos, Cohokatan, Mescalero Apache, Lions Apache, and Chizos people. Look at me getting text messages from um, the Republicans because I signed up. Well, I signed up to get that. um, No, I signed up once to take up a seat at a Trump rally because that's what the Gen Zers on TikTok were saying to do. They were like, sign up and reserve a seat. It's free and then just don't show up. And then the the rally will not have a ton of people at it. And that is what happened. But now they won't stop texting me because I told them my name was Linda. Well, Linda, it's time to saddle up and save this country. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, here we go. Great. Heart, don't fail me now. Courage, don't desert me. I'm seeing the word journey here in the outline. So I'm inspired by the song from our favorite musical. Musical. Anastasia. Mm -hmm. Yep, we're journeying to the the river. (laughs) Instead, we're journeying out to the Mm -hmm, river. mm -hmm. That's It's a mashup of Journey to the Past and Take Me to the River. (laughs) It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. So, um... This was our final day in Big Bend National Park. That's right. Third and final. We are hiking Santa Elena Canyon, Mm -hmm. which we were told, don't miss it. It's also a great spot for birds. We looked at the photos. We were like, this looks great. Yeah. Oh my God, let's go. Yeah. So we were up at our usual, you know, early, very early crack of dawn hour. We were still staying at our Airbnb, so we weren't packing up. So we were just heading back there after. But um, we did make sure to, like, I think we tried in our delirium, because the day prior we had finished South Rim, to pack as much as we could. So we were ready to just get up and go. I think we did as much as we could and then crashed real hard. So we did have to do a little bit of breakfasting, food preparation for our hiking today. So I think we actually ended up leaving more like 6.15, which is kind of later for us. But that's... No, that was us sleeping in a little bit. Yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we depart our way from the Airbnb and we make our way into the park from the west side. Which we were staying in Terlingua out of... We've mentioned this before at a very primitive Airbnb in the middle of the the desert. Um, It was great. We had a great time. Yeah. We did have a peat moss toilet and a solar shower. Solar shower is a euphemism for water in a jug of in like a container that you just leave out in the sun to warm up. Mm -hmm. Did it get really warm? No. Of but course not. It did what it needed to. Um, and it was kind of refreshing to be punched in the face by coldness um, after a long day of hiking. Yes, Let our was. muscles relax a little bit. So we drive into Big Bend National Park and we get on the Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive. And this is a road to truly just take the time to take in because it is really vast sweeping views of the Chizos Mountains and nearby mesas. There's a ton of rock formations that are you know, are, have shot up from the earth on all sides. And after turning onto the road, it takes us about 45 minutes to drive to the parking lot for Santa Elena Canyon. So it's a little bit of a haul to prepare yourself for. Like this was, again, we'd said in previous episodes, well, kind of have to do this now because we probably won't come back down to this area of the park. Because while the park is very manageable and doable, major things are very spread apart from one another. So it's kind of like you, you really do have to itinerize unless you're okay with driving from one 
one end of the park to the other in a day, which is going to eat up some time. So, And if you're coming to Big Ben to do more of a driving tour, then don't miss this road no. because it's a great thing to mm-hmm, do. Mm-hmm. Benefits of hiking early and often, we got some really beautiful sunrise imagery Mm -hmm. as we were driving in coming up around the Chissos, around the mesas. We were totally blown away by the color transformation across the landscape, getting lots of photos from the car, just like gorgeous, beautiful views the whole way. Mm -hmm. We did hope that we were going to see some Roadrunner while we were driving, but it didn't happen until we ended up getting much closer to the parking lot for the canyon itself. We were also hoping that we would still somehow spot Javelina, but... No Javelina. No Javelina. Javelina hid from us. Mm -hmm. That's right. So we didn't Mm -hmm. see any of those. Mm -hmm. But as we were approaching the parking lot, um, the road, it starts to wind a little bit more. The longer that we're on this road, the closer that we get to this gigantic rock wall that keeps like growing in the distance. And we can start to see what we're like, that must be Santa Elena Canyon up Mm -hmm. there in the the distance because there's this like spot in the rock wall that is just open. Open. We were like, okay, that must be it. Mm -hmm. So... Um, as we get closer, we realize that is exactly what we thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And this is where, as we're getting close, we do see some road runner as we were making our way into the parking lot. And I think this was a moment for you that, of excitement. Oh, I was very excited. Yeah. Well, one, because it's like most of the time when people see or talk about road runner, it's like they're talking about a character from from Looney Tunes. From Looney Tunes. <laughs> there we go. Thank you. But they are real birds. They are. They're not nearly as big as Roadrunner the character is depicted because that character is depicted to be as large as Wiley e. Coyote. Right. But alas, no. 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 Roadrunner are... They're pretty you know, tiny. They're small birds. Yeah. But they are like running across the road Maybe. and it is really fun to watch them. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when we park, we gear up and we use the restrooms that are there. Uh, and the parking lot here sort of has this feeling of what it would be like to park in like a beach lot. Just it has a very kind of like... I don't know. There was just that vibe I was getting. Maybe it's from growing up at the shore. But um, the privilege. There it is. I knew it was coming. (laughs) I knew that I just was setting the pins up for you to just be like, look at all of this privilege you've had in your life to grow up at the beach. To grow up near Mm, the beach. To grow up. What privilege it is to to grow up. It's true. Just, you know, let's devolve this podcast and just slice it down until it's, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, after we took some time at the restrooms, I mean, what a privilege that is, too. Okay. We're just going to keep Your doing Honor, this now. Uh-huh. For you, it's an absolute <laughs> privilege. And we walk <laughs> a wooden walkway in the sand, which was taking us down towards the river. So I think that's kind of where I was feeling like it kind of felt like Sandy Hook a little bit um, because it was also like Sandy Hook is a national seashore near us. Um, well, it's not a national seashore. It's part of Gateway sorry, National Recreation, recreation Area, area which is in like five area. parts yeah. here in the New York Harbor. So it kind of felt like that. I think that's why I was feeling feeling the vibe um, right. and you Certainly. know the privilege so <laughs> Um, and there weren't a ton of cars here. There were a few yeah. around, but we got our gear on and we like put in a stretch before we got going. Mm-hmm. There's a little wooden walkway area. So we like head toward that. Mm-hmm. And it's not a very terribly long walk to the river at all. The large walls that we were seeing from afar as we were driving in start to loom over us. And now it feels like they looked big in the car, but we're very close to them now. And, and it's kind of imposing at how large they are yeah and um the canyon is like right in front of us essentially yeah yeah and the trail drops us right in front of this like large like dry section of the river now the river is there we see the river and this is like a little tributary of the rio grande we were like oh okay there must be some way to get because we can see that like across the way on the other side of some of the water, what essentially looks to be a trail. And we were like, is that the trail that we're supposed to be on? We kept right. wondering this. Well, like well, you get to the river and you're sort of, it kind of feels like a beach because the river is there, but it's not pushed all the way to the boundaries of it. And it's kind of, I would say it's the dry part of the riverbed that when it is fuller or flooding or, you know, just there's more water, it's probably pushed out a little bit more. You might have to wade through some lighter water here to get to this spot on the river, which is the tributary, to kind of assume what your next move was going to be. Because there's not really a trail marker here. But like, as we approach the river proper, the 
tributary proper. We can see the canyon straight across, and there is a trail sign that's literally across the river on the other side of this embankment. And so we're like, oh, okay, well, I guess that we have to cross the river here. Well, I didn't assume this is a part of the hike. I, I just assumed maybe we would come to the canyon and just the river would wind into it, but this arm of the river splits across. So the only way to get into Santa Elena Canyon is to forge the river. I felt like we were Oregon trailing it here. Well, ford the river ford is what river. we should Sorry. say. That mm-hmm. is, and it definitely was an Oregon Trail kind of circumstance, mm-hmm. I guess. Mm-hmm. And so... We do sit there and, okay, we have a chat. We're like, okay, well, are we going to do this? Mm-hmm. Are we going to go across the river? I wonder how deep it is. I mean, it's re- it's only like maybe 40, 50 feet yeah. to the other side. Yeah. We did not bring any We didn't have water, water shoes, shoes with us. We, we knew we needed bring our... We flip flops. Yeah. We didn't bring any of that. We wanted our boots to be dry for later. Right. Um, so we're like, we can't just hike in our boots, even though they're waterproof. They would have been soaked through. They would and... be submerged in yeah. water and like water would would come through the top of yeah. them. They're not waterproof anymore. No, that circumstance. no, they're not submarine boots. So, so we're like, okay, well, what do we do? And we now? have a back and forth about like, well, maybe we shouldn't do this. Like, which feels very uncharacteristic for the both of us. But I don't think we had expected there to be a section that we would need to cross. And so yeah. I think a lot of it also dealt with, well, how deep is this going to be? The nice thing is, is as we were sitting and having this like existential crisis about whether they're across this small part of the tributary, there is a couple that we see coming back from the other side with their dog. And we kind of get an idea of what this crossing is going to be like and how high the water might come on our bodies. Now, these people were not the same height as we were, but we could kind of gauge a general idea of what it was going to be like. And I think seeing that and seeing and talking to them for a minute, we were like, okay, we can do this. This is not going to be too bad. Yeah, they came across. And so we were like, all right. So we took our boots and our socks off. We hiked up our skirts (laughs) and um, we held our bags over our head and we started to make our way across. Water was chilly, but it wasn't that cold. Mm -hmm. The water came up to like just above our waists. Um, no, it, it was like very high on our thighs. It did oh, not okay. get to waist level. Um, my shorts were hiked up as high as they could go. But they um, still got wet a little bit. The bottoms of them still got wet, like mm-hmm. towards my butt. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they were hiked up pretty high. And we did like take the moment to be like, okay, well, you had your camera with you. And we I had wanted our to have my camera. So we were like, everything's going in our bags. Bags are either going on our backs or over our heads. We used our hiking poles to sort of help us gauge the depth. And I was the first one to kind of go across the river as like the beta tester. You've got some really fabulous photos of me with my um, ensemble on Mm -hmm. um, with the very short shorts. It was very slick to start walking and it felt kind of like a mucky lake bottom the further you got out into the middle of the river. We eventually did have water up, like we said earlier, very, very high on our thighs. And even though my shorts were tucked up as high as they could go, I still got wet. So in the end, it ended up being fine, but was different from anything that we had to do in a park before. But now we know and are not afraid to do it if we have to do it again. No, no. Which, and I'm sure there's going to come a time where we're going to have to do it again. I mean, we. I think about the hike we did in Kauai, um, the Secret Falls hike. That yeah. was a lot of this happening, but I th- we knew what was coming there, like because other people had done it and told us that we were with your dad and your stepmom. So this is the this was kind of an experience that we, as much as we do for planning ahead of time, we didn't really know what to expect here. Now, this I think was where our sort of um, indoor rock climbing brains got really put to work mm-hmm. was when we got to the other side. Because right. the crossing was, you know, a bit of a challenge. Did you have a towel with you? No, no. So we basically just got out, maybe used some extra cloth in our bags to dry off our feet and put our socks and our boots back on. Yeah. That was the plan. However, it was the transition out of the water and onto the land, which was where um, there was a little bit of a toughie. Yeah. Because it's not like we were going from one shore to another shore. No. We basically got to the edge of an embankment and then we had to 
grunt up an embankment in order to like get to the you know the flat part of right the other the land side right there yeah it was like you kind of were able to go into this cutout section of the embankment and then turn to the right and there was a muddy muddy step up and then it was like a ramp yeah that was a pretty decent grade it wasn't long but it was like <laughs> i just remember i think i hands and need a lot of it like we had to and because yeah and it was a situation where we were like, okay, we have to be extremely strategic here. Yeah. Because this is where accidents will happen and like the technology will, will be, be submerged into yeah. water and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We didn't want to lose a DSLR camera to water. We didn't want to lose the phone in the water. We didn't want to lose our keys in the water. We didn't want to lose our privilege in the water. Oh my God. <laughs> that was a, your honor. She's reaching more than she's ever reached before. <laughs> She is grasping at... There's not even straws here. <laughs> there's not even straws here. It's grasping at nothing. Uh-huh. So it was a little bit of a dance of... I had all of the technology in my bag. Yeah. You tossed your hiking pack onto up the ramp Up the shore, essentially, yeah. And then you maneuvered your way up. Right. But then before doing that, you got to the edge of the embankment, handed me your bag. Right. So that that was out of play for the water. Right. And then I helped you up. Correct. And then we got up. That's what my life is. Just helping you up. uh There it is. (laughs) There it is. Mm -hmm. How privileged I am. Yep. There you are. Yep. (laughs) Great. Can we put this joke to bed now, please? Sure. Unless it presents itself too perfectly later. Oh, okay. Great. Great. All right. Let's You've not... just given yourself carte blanche. Well, let's not force the call back mm-hmm. unless the call back also, presents welcome itself. welcome to the stage carte blanchette. <laughs> carte blanchette. <laughs> See, okay. Carte has to be... I think it's Descartes blanchette. Mm-hmm. Descartes is the philosopher, right? Yeah, Descartes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think therefore I am. Yeah, there we go. I privilege, therefore I privilege. There, there it is. <laughs> that was a good callback. <laughs> The callback presented itself. <laughs> Don't force that. <laughs> so we get all of our stuff and ourselves up to the embankment. That is when we put on our... Um, we roll down our shorts. <laughs> we roll down our shorts. And then we The free start, show's over, everybody. The free show <laughs> is done. And then we start to put our boots back on. And um, <laughs> I remember we were so curious. We were like, huh. I wonder what the like river crossing is like at different times of the year. Yeah. And with that, let's take our first break. We're playing one letter change, everybody. We are. I mean, really, we have my mom to thank because mm-hmm. she was the one who introduced us to this game. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a two word answer. And there is one letter different in the second word. Right. Sometimes that means the words rhyme, but not always. Like, for example, um, uh, Email that you didn't ask for that then steals all your money. A spam scam. That's right. A spam there you go. scam. So in that in that way, that one rhymed. And that could be a rhyme time. It but. could be. But it's also a one letter change too. That's so. right. Mm-hmm. And if two little junk emails decided to get into a fist fight, it would be a... A spam spar? There it is. There it is. Okay. okay. And that's an example spam of it. Spam spar. Being... A rhyme. Mm -hmm. So there we go. Okay. Okay, so start us off. Okay, so a very dark and sinister measurement that would come up on a scale if you were weighing food. What is a grim gram? That's correct. (laughs) There it is. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. This is an underground place of death for... um, all of your A minuses and B pluses and C pluses from school. What's a grade grave? That's right. Mm -hmm. This is a command that you might be given by the power company to decrease the output from the solar panels on your house. Decrease the output of the solar panels. Is energy one of the words? No. Um, But it's in the wheelhouse of energy. Effort? Mm Mm-mm. Is halt one of the words? No. What is stop? What is what would solar panels produce? Energy from the sun. What's another word for energy that would help your house to do this? Power. Okay. Oh, okay. So is it decrease the energy? Lower power. There you go. There we go. 
Okay. If you're in a state, uh, I'm really trying to make this one work. We're going to okay. see. It may not work. Okay. I mean, it works, but I'm trying to make it work as a phrase. Got it. Okay. The two words are a state of being abundant with money, the choice one makes to place it into a place where it won't go anywhere. Is rich one of the words? Owning it, preserving it. Is wealth one of the words? No. Rich? No. Owning. Owning money? Think simple. Have? Yes. Okay. Preserve. Have save? There it is. Okay. (laughs) Sure. I have it, therefore I save it. (laughs) Great. Okay. Um, This is a plant that you might find um, within a marsh. Um, and it also may be a way to describe a particular type of instrument that contains types of these things with a small vessel that is used to repopulate said plant. Is pot one of the words? Mm-mm. Jar? No, think about vessel maybe isn't the right word. A small reproductive part of the plant. Stamen. Pistol. Something that would be multiplied. Seed. Mm-hmm. So, oh, okay. Is it a reed seed? Yeah, a reed seed. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. This is a phrase I said about the little part of my car where the air conditioning comes out Mm -hmm. when it decided to grow legs and just go away. Is vent one of the words? Correct. Scent vent? No. No. What is the past tense of go? Scent went. Vent went. The vent went. <laughs> the vent went. There it is. And that's one letter change. But don't don't After getting everything back on and gearing back up and taking cameras out of bags and having everything where it was before we crossed the river, we begin to head off in the direction of the trail. But before we do this, there's a little bird friend that's just singing his little heart out here. That is. It is. And it's um it's so loud. Yeah. It was so loud. And I was like, where is this bird coming from? And I'd never heard this bird before. It was an unfamiliar call. At the time, I was not terribly familiar with calls. Mm-mm. I am sort of familiar and a little bit better with calls now, but I would not call myself an expert on bird calls. But I certainly know where to go to find out what the bird call is. And I've gotten better at identifying them myself. But this one was one I had not heard of. Alas, there it was mm-hmm. in the tree right by where we were and it was this little tiny bird on this branch at the very top and it was singing and it was so loud I was like look at that and got a lot of great shots of it right then and what kind of bird was it it was I as I identified later funny enough it was also there when we came back Mm -hmm. it was still there and it was still just as loud it had not moved from a branch and it was and I've asked a few bird experts to just double check and we've all agreed it is a Bell's Vireo Bell's Vireo and Vireo's generally speaking, are tiny little small birds who are very loud. Mm. Mm-hmm. You got some good shots, too, because um, you had your camera. I really like that. Yeah. I'm excited because, like, now that we're in Big Bend, if you look on the Instagram, we're going to be, like, putting up my actual proper bird photography yeah. up there. So yeah. I hope you'll enjoy it. There's a lot from here. So before we crossed the river, we did watch that couple... And before they crossed, we noticed that they were winding down from a much higher section on the opposite side of the river that we were now currently on. So we knew that we had to go up. So we had to walk a little bit. We briefly walked through some, I'm going to air quote here, woods. And we see a ramped section of trail that we needed to climb in order to get us up and over, which would be a much rougher section of trail. But... That being said, this first part was incredibly well maintained. It's It looks rustic because it's built into the landscape, but it is essentially a giant concrete ramp. Yeah. Yeah. And it's great because it's it's some elevation. Yeah. Not very tough. Mm-mm. But it got us high enough in order to like see down over the river yeah. and see out and across. We were basically right at the mouth of the canyon here. And it was a really beautiful view in all directions. Mm-hmm. Generally speaking, everybody... Santa Elena Canyon is, even at this moment, I would say worth crossing the river, worth crossing all of it. Yeah. Having a great time. Yeah. I mean, you were fully in your element with your camera. 
and you did get I some really, really great good shots. Shot. We got a shot of like a river otter, which was That's really true. cool. There was a little river otter. We were otter. seeing all the wildlife here. Yes. Um, and so, they yeah. had said that Santa Elena Canyon was a great place to see birds and wildlife. Mm-hmm. And so that was one of the reasons why we really wanted to go. Yeah. There's a ton of different plants and animals, obviously, that we are seeing just along the banks of the trail and the, the banks of the river. So we're fully living it right now. We um, are. Mm-hmm. And we noticed that like the height of the river does not change. That along with going like up on this initial side, we'll also need to go back down to reach like the apex and to get closer to the river. Right. It wasn't like there was like a water, like we're going up, but we weren't staying up. We had to go back down towards the river. Like, right. cause it's not like there was a, it wasn't a like fall a waterfall within the canyon situation. at all. Yeah. No. There's a lot of really great interpretive signage here on the trail um, as well. And lots of information about the river and things we're seeing in the landscape. There's an, information on calcite in the rock as well as fossils and some other information about plants here and that's something that I feel like you know we talked about this a lot in the small trails episode when we were in the um, Chihuahuan Desert Nature Trail Mm -hmm. so much good interpretive signage and I do feel like Big Bend was really great about that. I was just about to say that Big Bend right now is getting the award for me uh, for interpretive signage Mm -hmm. because like I was able to learn so much and it's like it's not like it's interpretive signage that was put here in like 1930. Right. It's and like been updated. It's fully updated. Yeah. It's like um, visual. Like it's it's giving you a ton of information. Yeah. Always stop and read the interpretive signage, but particularly in Big Bend. At the top of the ramp, the trail turns into steps. We continue to travel up just a little bit more. And then eventually the path turns into some loose gravel. And that begins to wind us down closer and closer to the river and there was um, lots of cacti here and lots of other desert plants along the way. So when we get down this kind of slopey side after hiking a bit, we do end up in what we're calling the tall grass area, which was essentially most of the rest of the trail. It is named as such by us because really like along with the canyon walls, this is the landscape. This this is the plant life here. And it's really kind of interesting just because of the time of day we're here. We're fully in shade in the canyon and it is markedly different temperature even though it wasn't super hot in the sun on our way up and over that hill it's definitely a noticeably cooler temperature here and it felt really really wonderful and it was also at this point that we were fully immersed in the canyon and it was much quieter here and very peaceful let's talk about the quiet in the canyon for a moment because that was something i noticed really immediately Mm -hmm. and there weren't people i mean we were there were some other people we saw on this trail but not many no and but everybody was really respecting the silence. Yeah. Especially because it was so easy to hear wildlife sounds because it would echo through the canyon. Yeah. Like there was a bird across the way, probably another vireo that was super loud. Mm-hmm. I was really trying to spot it and could not find it. Mm-hmm. It just felt very kind of this austere silence. And I do, I was very appreciative of the fact that people did respect that, that we did see, because we were very quiet here. It kind of like turned us inward, I feel like. The path is sandier here, and it just felt very peaceful. As we were walking, um, you were ahead of me because I was bird dawdling. So I'm like, I'm listening, I'm looking, everything that like moves could be a bird. And so I'm like, got my camera at the ready. And then you were ahead and you spotted one. Right, I spotted a robin in the tall grass. No, you spotted a cardinal. A cardinal, that's right. Yes, a cardinal. I always, for some reason, I think it's because of... But here's the thing. Red robin. Yum. (laughs) Um... (laughs) I think a lot of people uh, confuse or say robins when they mean cardinals. Because also, like, they say that, like, red-breasted robins, when really, that can be the term that we use, sure, but the breast of a robin is orange. Right. It's It's like a red orange. Right. Like an I mean, some of them can be a little more red than orange, but the majority of them are orange. No, you spotted a a male cardinal, Mm -hmm. which, let's talk about this for a second. I love when holiday decor uses the cardinal and it'll put like two red cardinals together Gay. like it's like love and then I'm like <laughs> well these are two male cardinals <laughs> in love here everybody mm-hmm. I love that like I went into my friend's mom's house and she had a shower curtain full of red 
cardinals. And I was like, well, clearly this this tree that they've all landed on is the gay bar because Mm -hmm. um, this is just all male Mm -hmm. cardinals here. Mm -hmm. So I do love that. So you spotted a red cardinal. Mm -hmm. But of course, I'm sure it was very easy because like the red color is like penetrating through all of the other colors that are happening. I also just I was surprised to see a cardinal here because they're very commonplace on the East Coast. But it was a shock to kind of be and like, even oh. in the south yeah. but i didn't know they would be this far west yeah yeah we did see some other birds that i remember like being in the grass that you were trying to get photos of that they were just so fast they were it just so was fast. not happening no yeah i don't know what they are because we didn't no, i couldn't get a no. good glimpse of them so the light at this point is starting to enter the canyon on the wall that's closest to us and it's kind of just this very heavenly experience it really makes you appreciate the shift of colors with time and also the power that the river had to be able to cut through this rock to create the canyon because it's really neat you get to see this the undulation of the wall and like just imagine what the geological timeline must have been like for this to happen you know you think about the grand canyon and how long that took it just like makes you kind of appreciate the power of water and how pivotal it is to erosion yeah sponsored by erosion sponsored by erosion Mm -hmm. So there are a few sections that bring us like pretty close to the river and pretty close to the water. Like as we continue on this, this trail here, um, clearly people are able to like kayak or get on the water from these little spots if they wanted to. Right. Or just pull off from Mm -hmm. being on a kayak. I don't know that you'd launch from here, but it is definitely something I know that one can get on the Rio Grande um, on like a kayak or a rafting tour. And it's something we don't really prioritize being on the water in parks but it is something maybe that's a resolution for ourselves for this coming year getting on the water some more get on the water some more but i do enjoy being terrestrial um i do too Mm -hmm. well because you are extra terrestrial (laughs) it's true (laughs) Mm -hmm. eventually we do hit a terminal point or hit the terminal point of the trail Mm -hmm. you can't really go any further no it's really echoey here in this section of the canyon we can even hear our voices echoing yeah we try and like make sure that we're not too loud for that reason Mm -hmm. in particular but it was fun to play around with some echoes here Mm -hmm. we did see a ton of birds on our way back here so um some some highlights for you included there were many um one white winged duck and they do sound like that and Mm -hmm. that was what i loved that i got this great photo of these two um on a little branch and it's like their butts and Mm -hmm. it was a silhouette of the two of them Mm -hmm. we had decided we were later we were like "Mm, this is sort of a metaphor for the two of us yeah these two little bird friends who were just like sitting there who looked like they were just amusing each other oh yeah because that is what we do and then you viciously push me off the branch and then you pull me right back up on top yep yep Yep. it's it (laughs) i do it all the time (laughs) i love to push you off the branch knock you down a peg or two because you just think who you are that's right (laughs) But then we saw we saw turkey vultures. Mm-hmm. And what was fun about seeing turkey vultures here is because most of the time turkey vultures are flying above. And anytime we see them here in New Jersey, it's either turkey vultures or black vultures. And they're flying above because there's something that has died and they're swarming around and they're deciding who's going to pick it up and whatnot. Yeah. Yada, yada. But these were actually roosting. Roosting, that's just a fancy bird term for just like, they were just literally perched there, sitting there. That's what roosting means. Mm -hmm. Because vultures don't nest. They don't have a nest that they go to. They just roost. They come home to just like sit and perch. Mm -hmm. The way that we come home and sit and split. There it is. Yeah. We didn't see very many people as we were hiking in the canyon, which was, again, pretty nice. But as we're starting to make our way back, we do start to see a few more people. And we do have to make our way back up over that rock mound at the beginning again. So this is where the sun is more present and the coolness of the canyon versus the sunny areas becomes very apparent that the temperature change is very, very Um, strong here. It doesn't take us too long to get up and over and to basically eventually get back to the spot where we have to ford the river again. So when we get back to the crossing, there are some people that are starting to make their trek across the river. We wait for them to cross, but also try to give them some advice on making their way, you know, to the middle of the river. Where it's the deepest. Yeah. We have to do all of our stuff again. Also, we saw the Bell's Furio again here. Mm-hmm. Got some more photos of her. Mm-hmm. And then we, right, we put all the gear in the bags. We take off the shoes, take off the socks, and then we get in the water again. 
I think this time I put my bag on my head. I had it on my back, but it felt a little better up top just based off of how high the water was coming onto my legs. And it definitely, this was, I think we sat and scooted our way down the ramp because it's not, we had to. it was not a very pleasant experience getting in on this side, just as no. it wasn't a pleasant experience getting out on this side. But we eventually do make our way across and arrive on the other side. There are a ton more people that are headed out now. And yeah. there's just a bunch of people that are enjoying the banks of the river and just, you know, enjoying the canyon from the mouth of it, essentially. We start putting our gear back on. People ask us questions a little bit about, like, did you do it? And mm-hmm. we were like, yes, worth it. Do it if you yeah. can make your way across the water. It's yep. worth it. We definitely see one gentleman with a huge zoom big like telephoto gigantic lens, yeah. telephoto lens it was as long as his leg it was the longest biggest lens i've ever seen it felt like a dunce hat it did mm-hmm. it did clearly this is like a wildlife photographer yeah. with a zoom like that and i'm like yeah i would imagine that he's probably coming here to like get photos of birds you can only get here in this canyon and i'm sure he will you know sell them because he is a wildlife photographer Yeah. When we get to the car, we get a little drier and then we plan for what the rest of our day and our final day in Big Bend will look like. And with that, let's take our next break. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage. Do a leap of faith. (laughs) Do a leap of faith. I do love this queen. Mm -hmm. I do love this queen for many reasons. Yeah. I really want it to be like a Dua Lipa impersonator queen. Yeah. But who also has some kind of like religious illusion that she is like working with that's different every single time. Oh. Like maybe, maybe it's like this person comes out and you think it's the Pope, but surprise, it's Dua Lipa. You know what I mean? Or Dua Lipa the, faith. Dua Lipa, right. Or like um, a nun. Yeah. Right? Or something like that. Or like, what else? A Uh, cardinal, perhaps. A cardinal, (laughs) but a religious one, not a a bird. Maybe both. (laughs) But maybe both. Who knows? Um, But I do feel like there is this sort of like, I'm breaking out of like a religious constriction and I'm becoming Dua Lipa every mm-hmm. time. That's yeah. what I think Dua Lipa faith is. Yeah. I don't know much of Dua Lipa's music so I can't help um, out here. Girl, it's wonderful and it's okay. so much fun. Great. And it is everything you want it to be. Great. Yeah, so I don't know what songs she would sing. I'm assuming Dua Lipa songs but right. you gotta help me out here if it's Hold so much fun. <laughs> so like Dance the Night was from Barbie. You know okay. that song? Yeah. That's Dua Lipa. Oh, okay. There's that song Physical. I, that's my favorite song of Dua okay. Lipa's. That kind of like intentionally samples New Attitude okay. by Patti LaBelle. Okay. Let's get physical. That's, um, so that's Dua Lipa's song. It's okay. great. It's great. sort of like a reference to the Olivia Newton-John song mm-hmm. while also sampling the Patti LaBelle New Attitude song. And so I remember listening to it and I just was like, this is New Attitude by Patti LaBelle. You can tell which generation of gay I'm from. But um, because let me tell you... The ancient ones. The ancient ones. <laughs> the, the ancient ones. <laughs> the keeper of the keys. The keeper of the keys. <laughs> No, I love I love that song. So, right, she does a whole Dua Lipa show, but I think she comes out as some kind of religious figure okay. and then transforms into... I could see a look where she like comes out as like like a Mary Magdalene kind mm. of figure mm-hmm. and then transforms into Dua Lipa. Okay. You know what I Great. mean? Something like that. I have her merch. What's the merch? The merch is Necco wafers because if you were raised Catholic, um, that was what we were given as practice for communion. <laughs> Necco wafers. Necco wafers, yeah. Oh, is that what they were? Oh, did you not practice w- for communion when you did your practicing? No, they gave us the real like, um, but it wasn't consecrated. I'm sure it wasn't. It wasn't as the Catholics say, transubstantiated. Mm-hmm. It, uh, no, it was just like it was. Oh, just the we wafers. got we got Necco wafers. You know what I'm talking about, right? I don't know. Oh, they're like a candy from like the like the <laughs> the ancient Wait, ones. Do generation. they have like air in between? No, them? no. I know what you're talking about. They're like thin. They're different colors. They are almost like they don't taste like tums, but they kind of feel like they could be very thin tums. Um, but that's oh, what we were practicing. I with. totally know what yeah, you're talking about. 
in like a clear kind of yes. butcher paper sleeve. I totally ate these. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because we would pretend like mm-hmm. that they we would use them if we played church. Oh, if you played church mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the way that some people play house yep. and school. This is what we were indoctrinated to. <laughs> <laughs> indoctrinated into playing church. There it is. Mm-hmm. So um no I. There was one flavor of the Necco wafer that was just terrible. It was, it was the banana flavored one, I think. Was it that one? Yeah. I thought it was the chocolate flavored one. Oh, I thought that one tasted yeah. really terrible. They're all terrible. So, ladies and gentle thems, please welcome to the stage Dua Lipa Faith. If you thought our little adventure with Santa Elena Canyon was going to end there, you are correct. It does. <laughs> However, we do have a tiny little other trail we want to tell you about. Right. So we did just do an episode on small trails, but this is a small trail, but it felt more like it made sense to go here in this episode, considering it was exactly what we did right after Santa Elena Canyon. And it's something that you too could do. We did think that we would maybe get three hikes in in our delirium here because we were toying around with besides Santa Elena and this other small hike we're going to talk about in a second. There was thought about doing the Dodson Trail that left from the Homer Wilson Ranch. This was an area that we had been told by a listener that had some excellent bird watching. It would be a way that we'd be able to see some more of the park that was just south of the South Rim Trail. So originally in our planning, you thought that it would be like the best way to access the South Rim Trail? Yeah, I don't think I was really thinking clearly here but because it would have involved starting at the Dotson Trail coming to the South Rim through Juniper Canyon which was kind of essentially where we were in the middle where those clouds parted and we got that awesome view at lunch right continuing down Pinnacles up Laguna Meadow and then back down the Dotson Trail and out however I would like to offer this alternative which is because I think this could be a really cool loop to do like especially if you want to specifically look at birds because like you could do the Dotson trail right get up to the next section do the south rim take that pit canyon trail and then take that little kalima extension trail that is like a shortcut that avoids doing the south rim you could do that and then just get back on the dots then and then come back down sure yeah so if we were to go back to big bend i definitely want it when we go back to big bend i do not want to go up pinnacles ever at no. all ever but i do want to go all the way up to emory peak and i do want to do the little kalima connection trail and i do want to do the dotson trail so that might be great we could technically if we wanted to like you could camp too That's we could the way camp. That you do we it. could do dotson trail all the south rim all the way up to emory peak back down then take the cut out and then go back down dotson you trail you could that would be another long epic day, but what an awesome epic yeah, day. Yeah, yeah. The original planning that um, I looked at was close to 20 miles. And we we're like, there's a better way to do this. And so that's how we ended up doing the South Rim Trail the way we did it. It's not that we don't like long days. We at do all, love long we days. Do, but and we the, intentionally plan them. But the dots into Juniper Canyon, which would have taken us to South Rim, apparently is very exposed the whole way. And it would have meant a really early start and a ton of water to avoid yep. high sun. But what we were told is that we could go down onto the Dotson as much as we wanted to and then turn back around. You'd probably see some birds. You didn't have to do the whole thing. And so that was sort of our intent as we were driving from Santa Elena Canyon back towards our starting point. So we wound our way back along the road and we found ourselves at the pull-off for the Homer Wilson Ranch and realized that we were very elevated on the road and that in order to get down onto the Dotson, it would require quite Quite a bit of descent, which would have been fine, It, but it would have been like a killer bit of ascent for us coming back up. And honestly, we were wiped from the day before. Yeah. Wiped. Truly. Out truly. Still. So we played this out a little bit and we talked through it and we were like, well, then that means we would be coming back. It was already exposed sun already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We decided we didn't want to make the climb back up to the car. Yeah. I turned to you and I was like, I am okay if I don't do this. Mm-hmm. And you were like, praise, let's move on. Mm-hmm. But so we did. Yeah. So thankfully, Ranger Christy, who we talked to in the visitor center, recommended another hike that was over here. And that was the Lower Borough Mesa Pour Off. And also... You know, always stop and talk to the rangers because Ranger Christie gave us the best sorts of advice, especially when it came to the things we were hoping to achieve in the time that we were hoping to achieve it. So even though we have a plan typically going in, the rangers are 
absolutely incredible resources that you should use all the time when it comes to information about the parks that they work within. So the drive between Santa Elena and the lower borough Mesa pour off was about 20 to 25 minutes. There was another hike that was also leaving from that area called Borough Springs that was like from the general area. And we were like, we'll see how we feel post hiking if we want to try to do that too. This trail is only about a half a mile But it is very exposed. Mm -hmm. But luckily, this was like a bit of a cooler day. So we, I don't even think we wore our boots. I think we wore our sneaks. No, I think we put sneaks on. And um, we took our cameras and our water bottles. And that was it. And that was it. We lived life on the edge. And so there's like a little tiny little bit of like elevation gain and loss on this, but it's not much on this first part of the trail Because it's essentially like a descent down into a dry river. Yeah, there's a bunch of rock formations that are to our right and in front of us and to the left. The ones that are on the left are further away and the ones to the right and straight ahead are much closer. You, with your camera, I don't even think you did this with your camera, but you were like, oh my God, look up there. And there was just a big horn sheep hanging out. There was, and he was looking over the edge of the cliff. Yeah. And um, so I started taking some photos, and while we were walking, I took a bunch of photos of him at different angles. Yeah. And I was still getting to know this camera a little bit to see what it could do, but I was shocked at the clarity. You were snatched. (laughs) Of a... Of a shot that it gave me of this bighorn sheep framed by all of this beautiful, incredible cacti. It was like all the cacti from Big Bend in one picture. Yeah. So um, do check out our Instagram because I will be putting it there. Uh, That's one of the proudest moments of like a would-be amateur outdoor photographer that Mm -hmm. I've had so far because I'm like, I'm shocked that this camera was able to give me that shot. Yeah. I mean, it did take a little bit of like in editing, like adjusting levels and things in order for like certain things to come through. Totally worth that though. It's a very beautiful walk down through this area initially, which is also very filled with cactuses. And then we do drop down to the riverbed and round a bend and as we're walking we end up talking to some folks that are there about crows and ravens because there are some there's something that's flying in the sky that's black and it was an el- older couple and they were like is that a crow or a raven and i was like i we had had this conversation like earlier in the park you mm-hmm. and i because we had seen a bunch of ravens and you were like you can tell it's a raven because of this you can tell it's a crow because of this and i was like i'm going to defer to my friend who's mm-hmm. a little further behind me right now he'll be able to definitely identify this for you um and i did get some photos of this bird it was a raven mm-hmm. well one it was croaking yeah like a crow like a crow will ca- a crow cause Caws. and then a raven croaks however if they're really high up into the in the air it's it's kind of hard to tell the difference you're sure like, that's a black bird you know what i mean and it, they're of the same family they're both corvids so corvids. it's like what are they but essentially you can tell if they're flying in the air you can tell because of the tail feather right because the a crow's tail, tail feather is just rounded. It's just like a scalloped tail feather. However, a raven's comes to a point. Mm-hmm. And that's how you can tell the difference. And in the photos that I took, you can tell that it has an, a distinct point at the end of its tail feathers. When we're walking through this dry riverbed, there are a ton of lizards here scurrying around as we're walking. It's obvious that they're sunning themselves here because it is a very exposed space. And as we walk into the riverbed... I think that the pour over is in one spot, but you actually have to walk a lot further in. This is sort of like our, is that the window? That could be the window right. um, moment, but it definitely wasn't. Eventually, we get to a shady spot and the trail basically like dead ends. Comes into this like cathedral like shape with the rocks where we are finally greeted with the pour over. Yeah, it's very peaceful here too like that was the the kind of the feeling of this day of hiking it was just like oh well this just feels like you know not that you and i are particularly religious anymore but it felt like a little bit of like a very peaceful sort of religious experience um in nature yeah yeah um, a I spiritual experience. A we'll spiritual say. experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely a spiritual experience. Mm-hmm. I felt that here. Yeah. Certainly. We take some time here. We sit in the kind of the shadow of this cathedral and then eventually trudge our way back through this trail, which is a lot of just loose stone. So it's, it is kind of trudgy, but some, some nice noises here under feet. Um, we see our lovely little bighorn again, who's observing us from above. We planned to do the Burrow Spring Trail, but found ourselves to be extremely tired 
and really okay with just having a, an afternoon of splooting and um, and doing a whole lot of nothing. And and visiting Murfa. Yeah. That's what we decided to yeah. do that afternoon. Yeah. And it was delightful. Yeah. All right. So let's put the Santa Elena Canyon on the Karen Stone scale. I would give this a four only because of the river crossing and then the up and over, but like really only because of the river crossing. If there was no river crossing, it would be between a two and a three for me. Yeah, I'm going to say a four. It's definitely not a trail that everyone can do. Um, The river crossing made it a challenge, not a particularly difficult challenge, but a challenge nonetheless. And then the up and over was unexpected too. I think it was a lot of unexpected on this trail. So I'm going to say four. So that takes us to... Eight out of 20 on the Karen Stone scale. Yep. And then for the lower burrow pour off, I'm going to give it a one. Yeah. It's it's a very, you know, it, it's a doable trail. It's a walk in the desert. Mm-hmm. Essentially, it's all it is. Yeah. Around a curve. And then you walk back. Yeah. But worth it. Yeah. The lizards were so cool. I got some great shots of those lizards. I think it was just like a nice peaceful add-on, which yes. is always nice when there's time to add something on. Because if you want to do something small... You, you can find it in Big you Bend. Can, you definitely can. Yeah. And now let's end this episode like we end all of our episodes with some Jeopardy style trivia. All right. Who's going to get us started today? Why don't you go first? All right. Great. So... I was inspired by the word roost. Oh, really? Really? (laughs) I wasn't either. You weren't? No, I wasn't. But Um, I just found it fascinating that you, a birder, fascinated by the word roost. However, I went into an interesting direction here. Okay. And I have always thought it's interesting how the word roost sounds like the word roast, but they are not at all the same thing at all. Mm -mm. So I started researching words that sound similar, but mean different things and i ended up discovering paronyms which is something that we don't really talk about in school much well we did something interesting that's not the same but similar directions in our thinking interesting Mm -hmm. so a paronym is a pair of words that sound similar and but mean different things but don't sound like homonym similar and they could in fact have the same root word okay so like in many of these they sound so similar and they have very similar root words but they have different definitions yeah you're gonna have to identify both of the words in the pair great and i have a two word um game as well so look at that okay for 100 these two words sound extremely similar though they are different one means greatest or maximum as far as effort and time and the other means the highest point of something i'm thinking like apex and epic but interesting i will say okay so the word that it was really hard to avoid using part of the word sure. in the clue okay and it is the um the next step if i were to say the word more it would be the most the step after that most yes most and so greatest or maximum okay. as far as effort okay so most no no but most is the other one the second part of the word oh utmost utmost is one of the words okay utmost means maximum or greatest okay and then another word that sounds like utmost means highest point of something Oh my gosh, I'm... Uh-oh. <laughs> okay, great. I'll give it to you. Or I'll I'll tell you. Okay. It's utmost uh. and upmost. Oh, okay. Upmost is only referencing the highest point. I've never heard the term upmost. I thought yeah. it, I, that's why I would have guessed yeah. it was a fake word. There you go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for 200. Great. I think you'll get this one. Okay. One of these pairs in the paronym will give you a word that means to demean something particularly used when demeaning oneself the other will give you the term for what a car does in value once you purchase it and drive it off the lot was decrease one of the words decrease is not one of the words okay depreciate depreciate is the car word and deprecate correct (laughs) depreciate and Uh deprecate Mm -hmm. okay so for 300 One of this pair of paronyms will give you an adjective, which means to affect the body. 
and it's often paired with the word punishment. The other means bodily or tangible, referring to a physical state. What is corporal and corporeal? That is correct. Okay. For 400. One of this pair will give you a conclusion based on incomplete information. The other will give you a combination of events, like a hotel filled with press people when a movie comes out. This is the toughie. Is presser one of the words? No. No. I will tell you the th- the event when a movie comes out. and like, Premiere? Not a premiere. When like a whole bunch of press people are at a hotel and like actors are just sitting in hotel rooms with like, you know, backgrounds from the movie behind them and they're interviewing them. It's called a junket. Okay. And what was the first clue? A conclusion based on incomplete information. I don't know. So we were looking for conjecture. Okay. And conjuncture. Got it. Okay. And for 500. This is a toughie category. Great. (laughs) One of this pair means brilliant, as in an idea or plan. The other means innocent or unsuspecting. Is naive one of the words? No. Um, Smart? Yes, but think like the extreme end of smart. What would we call someone on the extreme end of smart? Genius? Yes. So a, a plan or an idea from a genius would be called what? <laughs> genuine. <laughs> Not genuine. <laughs> oh, God. Genius is part of the word. Genius level. Genius. There's something in front of the word genius. True genius. Pure genius. No. Not out, but. Ingenious. There we go. <laughs> So ingenious is one of the words. Okay. And then what is the word that means innocent or unsuspecting? Ingenue. <laughs> well, that's a re- it's close. That is how ingenue, I mean, ingenue yeah. could be considered a paronym with ingenious, mm-hmm. but that wasn't the word we were looking for. Okay. What was it? Ingenuous. Ingenuous. Okay. You're throwing me all the $17 dollar dollar words. Yeah. vocabulary. And so that's Tuffy dollar paronyms. is what I said. Okay, great. Well, we were in a similar neighborhood, so hopefully you do better than I do, uh, or I did. Um, mine is called Santa Elena Echo Chamber, and okay. it deals with simordnilaps. So a simordnilap oh, is... These a word unlike a palindrome where it's the same forward and backward it's like a different mom, word when spelled race backward. car it's a different word when spelled backwards so you're going to need to give me the original word and then the simordna lap um of it so we Got had it. a very similar <laughs> thought process here which was funny to me great great for 100 this word another name for poet and which is how many describe shakespeare in reverse may describe dullness or lack of color what is um, a, a drab bard? Sure. Yeah. What is bard and drab? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Great. For 200. This type of garment of the Levi Wrangler or Lee variety, spelled in reverse, describes the past tense version of what one would do in a hole in the ground where coal, diamonds, or other precious gems may be brought out of the earth. What is denim and mind? Correct. For 300, these types of garments include sweaters and cardigans, may be described as such if they are made of actual wool and left in water for too long. Is woven one of the words? No. Pill. No. It's oh, like, hold on, hold on. I got it. 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 <laughs> what is knit? Is knit one of the words? It, knit is almost the word. Knitted. Knits. And then stink. Yeah. Got it. What are you doing? I'm rearranging my knits. <laughs> oh, I'm reorganizing my <laughs> yeah, knits. There you go. For 400. This app on your phone that helps you to get from here to there in reverse would be very unhelpful and may come in the form of a pop-up, email, or text from an unknown number. Hi, Ruth. I'm coming by tomorrow to pick out a puppy. (laughs) (laughs) What is maps and spam? Yes, that is a spam text I got recently. uh, Right. Hi, Ruth. (laughs) I'm coming by tomorrow to pick up a puppy. Wait. No, I have to I have to share with you a spam text I received recently <laughs> that was just too good. And I know I sent it to you. So this is going to be old news to you, but new news Always to everyone. To everybody who cares. To everyone who cares. Mm-hmm. But it was literally, um, Annie, <laughs> I heard that a new hot pot restaurant has opened recently. When are you free? We can take your baby girl to get hot pot. 
<laughs> we can take your baby girl to get hot pot. We can, yes. Okay. We can. All right. And for 500, spam text for the win. This small space in a cabinet or cupboard, which may sound like someone who is rendering something with a pencil, in reverse would be a prize or monetary gift, perhaps for finding a lost dog or turning in a wanted suspect. What is drawer and reward? Correct. And what that's... if you were here in New Jersey, you'd call it the draw? Uh-huh. <laughs> or a drawer. Put it in the draw. Mm-hmm. No, it goes in the draw. Mm-hmm. This has been Gaze at the National Parks, the podcast, and we're here to remind you to hike early and hike often, and that adventure is always out there. Gaze at the National Parks was created and is hosted by us, Dustin Ballard and Michael Ryan. To see images from this episode, follow our Instagram at Gaze at the National Parks. To contact us, email us at gaze at the National Parks at gmail.com. And to find out more about the parks visited on this show, visit our website, gaze at the National Parks.com. And that's Gaze, G A Z E. All original artwork featured on Instagram, on our website, and in the Gaze Shop is by me, Michael Ryan. All original music was written and performed by Dave Seaman and Mariella Klinger with Sean Sklios on guitar. This episode was edited by me, Dustin Ballard. We would also like to acknowledge that while recording this episode that we are on the traditional and stolen lands of the Lenape people, also known as Ocean County, New Jersey. 